Hi, Stanford fans. Welcome to another Make It Monday broadcast. I am your host, Nan Gerlitz, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois. And I am here usually at 7 p.m. Central Time every Monday uh, here on my YouTube channel. Can't think of where I am today. I'm in my studio. Where are you guys? <laughs> So tonight I have a fun um, Halloween themed card for you. Uh, this is using one of our really fun bundles uh, called Cottage Wreaths, which when you first look at it, looks totally like a Christmas set, but there's all sorts of Halloween and fall, autumn, Thanksgiving kind of things built into it as well. So um, I also at the end will show you a Christmas alternative. So you'll be seeing that as well. Stick around. Let me see here. Let me see who's joining me. It is Penny. Hello, hello. Nice to see you, dear. Um, so if you are watching live, go ahead and drop a comment. If you're watching the replay, go ahead and comment replay. I'd love to see who's stopped by afterwards as well. Um, and if, as always, if you have any questions, either during or after or whatever, you can post a comment here. You can message me, send, you know, Morse code. I don't read Morse code. I don't. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but you can get a hold of me. <laughs> I do monitor comments here on all the videos, so if you comment here, I will definitely get back to you. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and switch the view. Let's get started. So glad you're joining me here. Okay, we've got it. Um, thanks again to um, the Stamper Man, my husband Russ, for some. Um, help on this card. I think I asked for a few opinions on this one as well. So it's always nice to get some collaboration, right? Sometimes things just aren't going quite right. You need an opinion. So always fun to do. And if you're standing by yourself and you need an opinion, feel free to um, go ahead and email me or message me on Facebook or wherever with a picture of what you're working on. And I'll be happy to chime in. I love sharing my opinion. <laughs> All right. As always, uh, I have a full supply list and cardstock measurements linked in the video description. So you don't have to worry about taking notes during the live. You can just go ahead and relax and watch what I'm doing. And that way you don't miss anything. And you can always go click that link later and write down all the stuff you need to or take a screenshot and you'll have all of your measurements and what have you. <laughs> so Okay, so it's very funny. Eek, spiders, I was just going to say. It's very funny that um, this was my card from Friday Night Stamping because I absolutely hate spiders. I frequently yell at my Facebook friends for posting pictures of spiders. I can't stand them, but it's really funny. These are very cartoony kind of spiders. I don't even mind touching them. <laughs> and... Um, so Russ is laughing at me because we both play a game on our phone and there's spiders. It started at a certain level. There were spiders and I was having trouble even looking at my screen. So um, I'm over it now, <laughs> but I really don't like them. <laughs> okay. Enough about me and my spider problems, right? So what are we going to be using tonight? We are starting off with a bundle called the Cottage Wreaths Bundle. Um, and it has the Cottage Treats stamp set, which is a photopolymer stamp set. So you can see through all your stamps, very easy to line things up and whatnot. Um, so I'll show you, we've got the Merry Christmas, of course, and we've got some evergreens and holly berries and things, but you've also got a grateful and you've got some great leaves. And these could either be, you know, your greens or they could be multi-hued kind of, um, I touched a spider. I did touch a spider. <laughs> it's, I seriously, it's a, it's a big deal. <laughs> um, but yes, you could use, you know, your oranges, your reds, your yellows, all sorts of things for your autumn cards. Um, and then we've got this cool twig uh, wreath, which is what we'll be using tonight. So you can do that for, um, for your Halloween cards. You can do it for, um, your Christmas ones as well and your autumn ones and, and put more leaves on and things like that. You can do lots of stuff. So we're using the Halloween, of course, tonight. Um, really, really fun little set. And then the dies are fantastic. You've got um, one of the dies will cut out the leafy wreath. 
This one will cut out the twiggy wreath, um, which we're using tonight. And then these two actually are great on their own or layered together with, they don't match stamps. They're to be used by themselves mostly um, as a layered leafy wreath die. You've got some bows. You've got, I love that they started doing this. You've got multiples of the same dies. So like this cuts out these little evergreen sprigs. So you can stamp a couple of them and die cut them at the same time. Um, so you're not running your die cut machine like 20 times. You can run it 10 times. <laughs> You've got four of these that are the same. You've got a couple of those holly berries. So lots of good things. And then this little guy cuts out that spider. So, okay. So that's first what we'll be using. Inks tonight. We're very, very uh, you know, Halloween-y. We're doing our um, Memento Tuxedo Black and a basic gray. And for cardstock and whatnot, we are starting with a base of basic black. This is eight and a half by five and a half inches, scored at four and a quarter. I feel like I should just record that because it's pretty much the same every week. I should really start doing some different ones for you guys. <laughs> We've got a um, piece of, got a couple of pieces of this. Parakeet Party, which is our very bright, like lime green. It's one of our new in colors. So this one is five and three eighths inches by four and one eighths inch. Um, because I wanted a very slim border on these. I really wanted the front to be the star of the show. And I've got a little bit of fraying going on here, which tells me I need to change the blade in my trimmer. So if anybody else needs that reminder, this is your reminder, change the blade in your trimmer. <laughs> uh, and then I also have a piece of Parakeet Party that is three inches square. That'll be for our front. Did I? Yes, I did. Okay, we have a piece of our black and white designer series paper. This is from the holiday mini catalog. Um, so it is black and white on one side and it is black and gray on the other. And I decided to go with that to make it a little more subdued. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, we also have another scrap of black that's for our bow. We've got a piece of Highland Heather. This one is four and three quarter inches long by three quarter inch wide. We have a piece of basic white that is five and a quarter by four. That's for our inside, plus a couple of scraps for our leaves. And then we have a piece of basic gray. This needs to be about three inches square. This one's a little longer, but this is for your wreath piece. So whatever will fit on the wreath is fine. Okay. We will also be using, uh, because we're using dies, we're going to be using our Big Boss. Um, these cottage wreath dies will actually work with the mini, but I am using an embossing folder as well that is not a mini one, so I am have to use the full-size die. That embossing folder is our brick and mortar. It's one of my favorites. I swear, I reach for this a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot. <laughs> um, and that is giving, I'll show you some texture to that parakeet party layer. It all just seemed a little too flat to me when I was putting it together. So I wanted to give it a little oomph. And that provided the proper oomph. I am also going to be using the Stamparatus tonight. You could totally do this card without the Stamparatus, but I did want to show you a technique that I find to be a lot easier to. Um, to uh, stamp some of your die cuts. Some of them are really easy to line up. These wreaths can be a little finicky. And so um, I've got a couple of tips for you tonight. And this is one of them. We will also be using dimensionals and we'll be using our very best trio um, corner punch. Well, it's not just corner punch because this one isn't, I guess. So very best trio punch. And I will actually be featuring um, projects with this punch all week over on my Facebook page. So if you don't currently follow me on Facebook, you definitely want to because I share ideas pretty much every day. So you can go to facebook.com slash Stamper Nan. I'm Stamper Nan everywhere. Um, definitely give me a follow over there and I will be sharing more ideas using this punch all this week. Alrighty. Uh, I think that's it. Okay.
let's get started. All right. So very first thing I'm going to do, any guesses? Any guesses? Oh, Penny, you just ordered that punch. Good, good, good. I will be giving you ideas for it all week. <laughs> How's that? All right. So we're going to go ahead and do the inside first. Save set. And we're going to grab that cute, cute little spider. Never thought I'd say those words. <laughs> like, I can watch Charlotte's Web, okay? That's a cartoon. <laughs> All right. I think I want to use... Oh, that's fine. So we'll use our tiniest block here and our Memento Black ink. And we are going to... So it was kind of funny actually when I, normally on Fridays when we stamp, we you know figure out what we're gonna do. And then when we're all done, we complete the inside of our card, which is obviously the exact opposite order that I do here on lives. So when I first stamped the inside of the card Friday night, I had it going this way. And then I remembered that it was a landscape card. So I just changed it to be that way and it worked out fine. It looks super cute. <laughs> So let's go ahead and add this to the inside of the card so it is out of my way and I don't get ink on it or get confused as to what I'm grabbing. A little bit of our stamp and seal in each corner. That will be just enough. Voila. All right, so that part's done. Um, next, I think I actually want to Go ahead and assemble those front pieces because why not get those done too, right? Now, I did not put this in the um, on the supply list because this is totally optional. As you can, as you will see, it does not show on the front of the card. This is um, one of those little money saving tips for you. So when you have a card like this, where you've got your card base and then you have a layer, and then you have another layer, you don't see anything under this layer, right? This, this parakeet party, this green. So I'm actually gonna take our rectangle dies, our stitched rectangles. Um, this would also work great with the deckled rectangle dies. Those are awesome as well. And I am just gonna cut out the middle of this card. You could also do this with your trimmer. So if you don't have a die cutting machine, um, you can totally do it with the trimmer. And if anybody would like to see that and have me walk you through it, I can certainly do a video showing that as well. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to learn. But since I do have a die cutting machine, this is the easiest way to cut out the center of your card sock. Okay, so we'll get that done. So as I said, I did not put the stitch rectangles on the supply list because it's totally optional and not needed for this card. It's just a nice little money saving tip because now I can use that cute little stitched rectangle. If you can see the stitching all the way around the sides, I can use that on another card on the front. So I get kind of two cards for one little piece there. I'm actually going to use my liquid glue for this since I do have just kind of these um, this frame, I'll just put a little bit on all four sides. And then we will stick that down to our black. The liquid glue also gives me a little bit of wiggle room so that I can make sure that that's pretty straight. I don't worry about being perfectly straight. This is not NASA. <laughs> I don't have to have those calculations perfect. It just has to be pleasing to the eye. <laughs> okay, get that piece out of the way. So now we can go ahead and attach our um, designer paper. And I'll gotta tell you, this designer paper, I've featured it before, but it is such a cool pack of paper. It's got the black and the gray on one side and the black and the white on the other. So you've got stripes, you've got polka spots, as we call them in our house, you have zigzags, um, you have the, um, it's not an argyle. Diamonds, yeah, sure, diamonds. Um, bigger stripes, 
and stars. So lots of very versatile things. You can obviously use them for Halloween, but um, you can also color those white pieces with um, your blending brushes, your Stampin' Blends, watercolors, all sorts of things, uh, and make it whatever colors you want. So very, very versatile little pack of paper. So once again, we'll just put a little adhesive in each of the corners. And bam, okay, so there's all of the easy parts done. <laughs> and now a little more stamping. We'll go ahead while that spider is still on his block. So I just have a couple. I think they're really kind of scurrying away from the wreath. And they're really, oh yeah, I guess so. Just looks because these are a little closer on that end. It looks like that's the front of him. I don't really know which one's the front of him. Quite frankly, I don't want to find out. <laughs> All right. And now let's grab our boo. There it is. So this is interesting because I almost just put it on upside down. Well, I mean, stamped it upside down. Because the only way you would know is the exclamation point on this one. And actually, I need to figure out where that wreath is going to hit. So right about there. But I don't want to stamp it while it's on the wreath because that'll be bumpy. <laughs> there we go. Okay, one more thing with the black. So here's one of my little tips that I want to show you. So when you see the um, stamp case, you'll see this little V or a carrot. If you're in editing, you'll know that's a little carrot. <laughs> um, and that is very helpful. Because on the dies, there's also a little V or a carrot. See right there on that little sticky outy, that little tab. And so those help you line up the stamp and the die. Because let me tell you, it is a little fiddly and you're like, which branches line up? And you're spinning it around 360 degrees. So what I did on my stamps, you'll see, I put a little mark with a sharpie marker i just put a little dot there not directly on the branch but on the edge of the stamp to each of them so then i would know which part to line up with my dot okay so like this is one where i already cut it out and you'll notice too that the die actually kind of indents oops there we go it indents that little tab so you'll notice so i put the little mark on my die as well, or on my cutout. Okay, let me gather my thoughts. Let me clear my space. <laughs> and we'll, I'll show you how you're going to stamp and die cut this. So the first thing I do is I take my block, I take my stamp, and I am going to put the stamp with the, um, my little dot, my Sharpie dot, right up on the top. So I know that direction is gonna to be to the top. You'll notice that that's what I also did here. So whichever way you wanna do it is fine. If you always wanna have it to the right, you can have it to the right. If you want it on the bottom or the left, just make sure you decide which way you're gonna do it and you're gonna do it consistently every time. And that way you don't have to worry about, uh-oh, which way did I stamp that? You know, I'm gonna do it on the top every time. It's just easiest for me, I think. Okay, so. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this on my basic gray. I'm actually going to take the stamp pad to this. You can see it's all inked up because the stamp's a little wider than the ink pad is all. Okay, so my dot is right up here at the top. 
I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And then I also brought my Sharpie over here with me so that I can also make a little dot on the cardstock outside of where it's going to die cut. But that reminds me, hey, that's the side I left up. So just in case this was a three inch square and I didn't have these little notches cut out of it, I would know that that's the way I stamped it. All right. That's especially helpful if you have little kids or pets or spouses or anybody at home that might interrupt you while you're stamping. So, oh, you stamped and then you walked away and you're like, shoot, where was that side? If you just mark it with a Sharpie right away, you're good. Or a pen or a pencil, whatever you want. Okay, let's bring in the big boss. And now, so I have my Sharpie little dot up there. I'm gonna grab my die and my little V is right there. So that's gonna go at the top. And it is still, I will say a little weird because these lines that keep the wreath connected, obviously, otherwise you'd have two pieces. They kind of get in the way of some of those branches. So just remember where your V is, right? And where your dot is, and it's around there. So it is just a little skosh off. My dot is a little bit off of there, but that will give you the general idea. Cause as you can imagine, when you stamp all those that twiggy wreath, you're gonna be like, uh, which bit goes where? <laughs> so if you're in the area, that's a heck of a lot of help. Okay, we're just gonna run that through. So it cuts out your center and around. Now, the other way you could do that, because I just realized I completely didn't do it the way I intended. So let me tell you about that. So I'm actually not using the Stamparatus tonight. <laughs> but the other way you can do that, which is super helpful. So you take your Stamparatus. Oh, I do need the little... Foam, foam mat. And I'm going to go ahead and let's once again take that wreath. My dot is up here. You go ahead and pick it up. I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to stamp it on the grid paper first. Doesn't matter if it's a good impression, even, although it was. <laughs> Now, this was the die cut that I told you I already did, right? Now I can line that up with the stamped image, which is super easy because there's no crossbars that are in my way. And I could say, okay, that's where I would want the die. Now, let me grab a piece of white. Amongst yourselves. So we usually have a bunch of pieces of white cut out. I don't know what happened to all of them because there's none of them around. <laughs> all right. Just cut so now I'm just going to die cut this. I'll do that off camera because everything's right there for you. And I am die cutting a blank piece of white. This is a super helpful technique, especially if you're doing multiples of dies. Because think about it, if you have to stamp and then line up your die and run it through like 20 times to make 20 cards, that's rather time intensive. Hmm. So I forgot to mark where my darn, oh, that's okay. 
Um, but if you just run random pieces through with your die 20 times, and you're just cutting blanks like this, it's much quicker. And then you can fit that die right into that blank space. You already know that that's exactly where your stamp is gonna go. So let me ink that up again. Stamp it down. And whammo, there you have the perfectly stamped and die cut wreath. So now if I had 19 more of these blanks already cut, I would just slip them in, ink it up, stamp. Slip it in, ink it up, stamp. And it would be so much quicker. So if you've got multiples to do, the Stamparatus is a real, real time saver. Um, and, you know, headache saver. <laughs> so that was how I intended to do that to start with. <laughs> Both ways work, and I'm very glad to know that that way worked so well with the die cut as well, because the first one I did Friday night did not turn out as well, and that was before I marked this with the dot, though, so. So there you go, two different ways to do it. Thank you, Penny. I do love that tip. I forget about it sometimes, and um, it's so helpful, especially when you have dies and stamps like this that are very, um, just very detailed. And so sometimes it's a little hard to line things up and whatnot. Okay, get some things out of the way here. So now we have um, a couple of, I can get this out of the way too. We have a couple of leaves that I'm gonna do. And this was, I actually was second guessing myself on this one too. To, saying, oh, maybe I should have stamped these on gray as well, but I kind of liked the pop of white after I thought about it. But this is where I'm pulling in the gray ink pad because I didn't want them to be black and then have the black bow as well. So I pulled in the gray from the designer paper. Can you all tell I'm frugal, like I'm stamping this down at the bottom, like I'm gonna use this tiny piece of white? <laughs> I do actually have a tray of little scraps at my stamping station. So if I need a little half inch strip for a small sentiment, or if I need, you know, to stamp a spider and, uh, and die cut him, I have these little things like that. So it is helpful. It does save me trips to my drawer. It saves me uh, a little bit of money, so I'm not cutting into a big, sheet of cardstock. All right, and I think that is all of our stamping. Let me get those out of the way. Uh, we need to die cut these real quick. This particular stamp set is one of the, um, uh, one of the stamp sets that we are using for World Card Making Day. And you can find out more about World Card Making Day um, on at my shop, which here, let me show you that first. Get with the program. <laughs> um, my shop, you can go to there and you can purchase any of the products that I show tonight. You can also find out about World Card Making Day, which was not made up by Stampin' Up. It sounds like it was, but it wasn't. Um, it was actually started by a paper crafting magazine decades ago, I think. Um, but it is October 1st. When you're on my shop, you can click the new tab to see uh, about World Card Making Day. It is a free event. You can register or just show up that day on October 1st. And they're gonna actually be doing live crafting, kind of like I do. And um, I'm not sure exactly what to expect. I just know I'm excited about it. All right, so we have one of these dies. So they are using three different bundles that day. One of them is this bundle, the Cottage Wreaths. Uh, another one is the Cottage Rose bundle. And then the third one, I think it's called Well Wishes or Warm Wishes. I can't remember now. It's a new one that's not out yet, though. Um, it's coming out in the next mini catalog that goes live in January, but you can actually get it right now 
um, as part of World Card Making Day. But only for a limited time. And then if you miss it, you'll have to wait till January. I've got such a mess going here, you guys. <laughs> And I know if I showed you, many of my friends would go, that is not a mess, honey. <laughs> That's a mess to me. It's all in how you look at it, right? So when I do have little dyes like this where, you know, there's a lot of little detail leaves around there. So I'm just using a piece of post-it tape, which is amazing stuff, just to kind of anchor that down so it doesn't shift while I'm putting the top plate on or anything like that. Post-it tape is your friend. At least it's mine. <laughs> you could also use washi tape. You can use painter's tape. But I will tell you, if you're going to use any kind of tape, make sure to like press it against your jeans or your sweater or something a few times to get a little bit of the tackiness off before you um, put it on your paper. Because otherwise, it could rip the paper when you pull it off. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Okay, so there's that. Oh, one more thing we need that big boss for. Nope, two more things. Wow, I'm Chatty Kathy over here tonight. I'm forgetting what I'm doing. So first, uh, let's go ahead and die cut that cute little bow. Oh, we got the die cutting stuff out here. So on the dies, it's really nice. They've given you two. They've given you the outline of the bow. And that is for if you've decided to stamp it, you can cut that out. Or they've given you a bow that's just completely used as a die cut. No stamping involved. And that's the one I'm going to use tonight. I love these kind of dies because they give you all that detail and everything on the inside. It's not just an outline. It's really nice if you're in a hurry, too. I think with this particular one, um, it would be super fun to just, while you're watching TV or whatever, maybe you're in the carpool line, take the mini with you. <laughs> and, uh, and you could just cut a bunch of bows for like your Christmas cards or whatever. But you'll see all the little detail lines that it went and cut, too. So pretty. I love it. Okay. And then I'm going to take these plates away. and grab our specialty plate, our number four, because that's what we use to emboss. Still start with our number one plate. We grab our embossing folder. Oops, hinge side through first. So the hinge on the embossing folder goes first. And just push it through. Ooh, I love it. So you've got this side, or you could use this side. Either the debossed or the embossed. I think I'm going to flip it over and use this side, and we'll just see what the difference looks like. Okay, and also on this layer, we're gonna use our little best trio punch. <clears throat> Excuse me, throat's getting a little dry. So we're gonna use the, um, just the straight corner punch here. So it just gives you that triangle cutout, which is great for bookmarks and tags and cute little card elements. So on a nice square like this, you know, you've got, I mean, you could make like a cute little stop sign probably out of this, a nice little octag oct octagon. Wow, octagonal. Okay. <laughs> I had a very Monday Monday today. How about you guys? <laughs> and I'll tell you, I was thinking today that, oh, I've got my live tonight and Monday at work was just not really going great. And then I realized, had to come home and stamp for all of you so that was nice it always cheers me up to stamp for all of you 
Okay, so now what I want to do, because I want this to go to the very edge of this, but I also want it to go to the very edge of the designer paper. So it's kind of hard to eyeball. So what I decided to do was I just attached this end first. So I'll just put a little liquid glue. We'll flip it over and we'll get it, we'll eyeball it to center. And there we go. And then this whole thing goes up on dimensionals. Did you guys see where I put those? <laughs> I'm telling you, I've got quite a mess here. I just got putting things in my little cart. Here they are. <laughs> I knew they'd be around here somewhere. <laughs> it was the Mondayest Monday ever. We joke about the whole Mercury's in retrograde thing, and I did look it up because it's just kind of funny. But yeah, it's in retrograde till October 2nd, so good luck, y'all. <laughs> All right, so just a few dimensionals to hold this guy on. Yeah. Okay. And then again, just going to eyeball the center and we're going to line up that purple with the edge of the designer paper. Okay. Now I need a couple of dimensionals on my wreath. Now I think I probably used mini dimensionals, but I didn't bring them over here and I have stepped away from you guys one too many times already tonight. So we're just going to cut the edges. Because I don't know about you, but I use like all of my dimensional. So, um, you know, I, I cut into those edges and all sorts of stuff. And sometimes they're the perfect size for things like right now. <laughs> but sometimes it's nice to have a big, long strip, too. So. All right. So this side is kind of a little skinnier. So I just put that over on the left. And I covered it up with my leaves and my bow. And for these, I will use a little bit of our liquid adhesive. I'm gonna go ahead and use my awesome tweezers. Have you all seen these tweezers yet? These are from our embossing additions kit that's in the mini catalog. And they are great because you squeeze them to open them. And so when you let go, they're holding on to whatever you've got and you don't have to like squeeze it to hold on to those. So it's really nice when you're working with little things with liquid glue. It's perfect for holding a ribbon closed when you're trying to tie bows. It's really great for all those kinds of things. So just a little dot in the middle of my bow there for that. And voila, is that it? Am I done? <laughs> I am. Okay, so I'm going to give you a close up here so you can see the differences between. So there is the embossed. And there is the debossed. So definitely more texture, I think, on that one. And either way works just great. Okay, what else did I want to tell you about? Um, I did want to tell you also, oh, yes very important when you're on my shop you can also check um the specials tab and we have september weekly deals for the month of september isn't that clever how they named it <laughs> but every thursday you get a new batch of weekly deals that are good for the week so you definitely want to check that out um, right now obviously we've got we're continuing from last week's and then on thursday um you will see what the new weeks are but they are great deals on some of our best products. Definitely check that out um, and, and get on there. Uh, you've also got, uh, as I said, the World Card Making Day. Ah, and also on the new tab is some exclusive dies that are only available for September. It's called Perfect Partners. And they took six of our most popular stamp sets that are currently available, but did not have die sets available 
and they made uh, exclusive die sets for those, but they're only available till the end of the month. So definitely check that out as well. And then I want to remind you that Paper Pumpkin, which is our monthly subscription kit, is uh, we are on October's kit right now. So you subscribe anytime by the 10th of a month. So by the 10th of October, and then you'll get that month's kit. As part of uh, being a subscriber, you get um, uh, exclusive option to purchase past kits or refills if they're available and things like that. So it's a nice little deal like that. Um, paper pumpkin boxes come completely, I have one around here somewhere, there it is. <laughs> They come in uh, usually a little red box or a kind of an orangish box, but this was September's kit, so you can't get this one anymore. Um, but this, they come in a box to you and you've got, like this one had an extra free gift, but you always get an exclusive stamp set that's not available through Stampin' Up! any other way. You get one ink spot, which is our traditional regular colors. It's just in a one inch little ink pad. September's had two. Uh, and then you get all of your um, components to make the projects. So this was, I think, nine different greeting cards. So they're all cut. They're all scored. We've got instructions for you. So this is what, whoops, upside down. This is what this one made. Um, envelopes were included on all of the card packs. So sometimes they're cards. Um, this was actually August, sorry. September's was... Um, uh, Halloween treat bags or boxes. So that's really fun. And then next month, uh, so this was September's next month, we are starting with Christmas. So next month will be nine festive cards. Uh, so be sure to uh, subscribe by October 10th. And you can just go to paperpumpkin.com and subscribe right there. Please, I would love it if you choose me as your demonstrator when you do. Uh, any questions? Again, reach out, I'll be happy to answer them. And now as promised, I've got a Christmas edition of our uh, card from tonight, same layout, but look what I did. We turned it to a portrait card. So I just turned it sideways, made the exact same card. I actually used the brick and mortar on the background this time, left that white layer flat. And so you'll see, this is the leafy um, uh, wreath. Can't talk tonight. Um, so this is actually pear ink on pear cardstock. And I did stamp those little holly berries. Let me show you that little stamp. So there you've got the holly berries right there. I did stamp and die cut those actually, but then I felt like it needed bling. So I added our red rhinestones, got a cheery little red bow. So there you've got another way to use that same layout. Um, so always make sure, you know, turn things around and see if you can make it work in a different direction. Um, maybe look at me, make, make it look completely different than what you had. So, um, I mean, I would be fine sending the same person, these two cards, and I bet you they'd never even realize, you know, cause they're going to get them a couple months apart. So, um, so there you go. Uh, let's see anything else I forgot to tell you. I think I covered it all. For tonight, at least. <laughs> you know me, I could go on talking and talking and talking about Stampin' Up! forever. So thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you learned something new here tonight. I know Penny got a couple of good tips out of it. I, um, I hope I can give you some more for that new punch, too. I've, I've been researching, so I've got some fun things for you. Um, as always, I am here uh, 7 p.m. Monday night Central Time here on my YouTube channel. Uh, until next week, I'm still Nan Gerlitz. Happy stamping.